Hello, everyone, and welcome to Growth Mindset in Practice, Successfully Applying Growth Mindset in Your Youth Mentoring Work, brought to you by City Year, Mentor, and Mentoring Works Washington. We're so excited to be with you today for this interactive conversation about how growth mindset applies to your youth mentoring work. So we'd like to start um, by going over a few housekeeping items, as you can see here. Um, as you can tell, your lines have been muted throughout this webinar to improve sound quality, but we'd like this to be an interactive experience because we think you'll get the most out of it that way. Um, and to that end, we'd ask, like to ask you to use the questions box as much as possible to answer questions and make comments. So you can see that at the bottom of your control panel. And we'll do your, our best to incorporate your feedback and your questions into our discussion today. There will also be opportunity to ask questions at the end of the webinar, so you can use the questions box for that purpose as well throughout our discussion. As you can see at the bottom of your control panel, there's a handouts tab. Um, we're going to be pulling up that handout um, and walking through some questions in a little bit, so we invite you to pull that up um, as we go through an activity in a few minutes. Um, and it's also a helpful reflection tool in your work mo moving forward. You may want to use it for that reason as well. And finally, we have a poll that we're going to ask you to participate in a few minutes as well, so be ready to answer a question that pops up on your screen. And now I'll turn it over to, to Tasha Booker from City Year, who will go over our objectives for today. Thank you. So the objectives for today's webinar is to increase knowledge of the growth mindset and how to apply it to mentoring relationships and programs. Um, many of uh, who you are participating in programs um, with a mentoring component. Try out some tools that can help mentors use growth mindset principles in their work with youth, so you'll have an interactive opportunity to learn how to use the tool. And then to generate practice insights that can facilitate success for mentors and programs using the growth mindset. Thanks, Tasha. Um, so just a quick review of our agenda for today. We're going to start with some introductions of our panelists and then move into an, an icebreaker activity. Yes, we can do that on a webinar. Um, and then we're going to launch into a quick overview of what growth mindset is, followed by uh, a little um, run through of our growth mindset for mentors toolkit um, and even try out an activity from the toolkit. And then we're going to move into hearing from insights from the field, both from City Year and Mentoring Works Washington in their work with, the, with growth mindset, um, with mentoring programs and mentors, and then finally make time for some questions from you all um, and give you some additional resources. So my name is Delia Hagen, and I am a program manager at Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership. Mentor's vision is that every young person has a supportive relationship that they need to grow and develop into thriving, productive, and engaged adults. And we do that um, in partnership with our growing network of affiliate mentoring partnerships. Um, and we work to unify and give a voice to the mentoring movement, set standards to ensure mentoring is safe and effective, and work with programs to connect more youth to mentors. And now I'll introduce Tasha and Carolyn from City Year. Thank you. I am Tasha Booker, Vice President and Executive Director for City Year Columbus. So a little bit about City Year. We are an education organization that is fueled by national service. Uh, we are partner with public schools in urban and high poverty communities to help students graduate from high school ready for college and career. We operate in 28 cities across the nation uh, in over 300 schools and school districts. And we actually have two international affiliates in the UK and in South Africa. Our teams of AmeriCorps members serve full-time in schools um, where they tutor students one-on-one, -on -one, provide in-classroom support, and organize school-wide programs around attendance, behavior, and academics. And next, I'll introduce Carolyn traeger Kleiman from City Year. Thank you, Tasha. Hello everyone, my name is Carolyn traeger Kleiman, and I have the privilege of serving as the Senior Director for Education Strategy and Policy at City Year, and have had the privilege of working with Mentor Perks and the Department of Education on this initiative and the development of the Growth Mindset for Mentors Toolkit. Now I will turn it over to Janet. 
Hi, I'm Janet. Great to be here this morning. I'm so glad, so glad many of you could join. Um, I am the Deputy Director for Mentoring Works Washington. I've been here for nine years. Uh, Mentoring Works Washington is one of 28 state or regional mentoring partnerships across the country affiliated with Mentor. We work to build capacity of about at least 100 formal mentoring program, youth mentoring programs and to increase the quality of mentor, mentoring and therefore increase positive youth outcomes. In my job, I lead the quality assurance and continuous improvement process here for mentoring, develop and coordinate research and demonstration projects, and have been um, the lead on growth mindset for the work that we've done. And I've just started my third year with my high school mentee in a wonderful and unique program. So let's go back, and I'm actually going to shift now to that icebreaker that Delia talked about and ask you to either have a pen and pencil ready or to use that um, handout that you had. Okay. So first, we want, to, we want to really start by demonstrating some of the key uh, concepts of growth mindset by asking you to participate in a reflection activity. We think this is um, helpful to prime the pump for the conversations that are coming and also to prime the pump for taking in the concepts and it, or expanding them. In the handout tab, there's a document, again, that you can download and complete the answers, and so, or just get a pen and paper. And, and the, I'd love to have the panel do this as well. So these questions are intended that you see up on the screen as well to personalize growth mindset using your own experiences and thoughts. In addition to framing the upcomer, upcoming hour, we know from research that modeling growth mindset is a significant aid to shifting mindset in those around us, especially kids. It's not just enough that we want kids to um, increase their growth mindset. So I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I'll pause for, for you to write down, um, jot down some answers. I'll go through those, and please um, type in your questions as well. So let's get started. What's one thing you want to be able to do but think you can't. What would you have to do differently to be good at that thing that you don't think you can do? How long do you think you would need to work on it? So the next question is, how long do you have to work on it to have to be good at that? So if you're working on it, what kind of help would you want? And how, how could you get that help? And finally, how might this, this process here that, and the things that you've decided to, that you would have to do, how might this apply to young people you mentor directly or that are in your mentoring program? Before you check in, I just want to say something about the breadth of this. Um, I think initially it's very easy to think, though, growth mindset is about all about cha changing intelligence or just believing that you're you can grow your intelligence, your raw intelligence. It's also about your talent. It's also about behaviors that you think are challenging. So um, I would love to see. I don't see any messages typed yet. So what might some questions be that you guys have? or answers. What are, what are some of the things you thought you were not able to do?
Janet over here on um, the mentor team has a, has a few. We've got cooking, we've got some different crafts, um, and it sounds like folks are chiming in now um, through the questions box saying um, they'd like to learn another language, they'd like to be considered an expert in their field, be able to sing, um, write their first novel, um, take time to do art projects. Um, so those are just a few examples of how folks are answering the first question you posed. That's great. So okay. tell one more dancing anecdote. and run a marathon as well. I'm sorry. Ah, yeah, that's some practice. Um, it was so interesting when I was training mentors one time. One of the uh, mentors said for the growth mindset project is that she was just amazed. She always thought she couldn't draw, and she then she got determined that she was going to draw, right? And then and then she could. And I said, and she said, well, I always wanted wanted to sing. I said, well, how's that going? She said, oh, I can't. It was just so interesting. So. What do you, some of you think that you'd have to do to get good at that, what, whether it's the marathon or dancing or cooking? What do you have to do to get good? Some questions, some uh, ideas already coming in, Janet. We've got um, practice, practice makes perfect, taking classes, consistent mm -hmm. practice, um, having to study, practice, and apply what you're doing, <laughs> believing yeah. in yourself as a component, and making sure that you're not afraid to fail. Wow. Very good. All those things, I think, are right on the target. Practice, doing it again, getting back up again. I'm always, uh, it's sometimes harder to say what kind of help do you want. What, what are folks saying about that? Or are there, are there comments about that, Delia? And how do you get it? Yeah, um, so what we're seeing is um, I want to leverage the strengths of others who are succeeding at what I would like to succeed mm -hmm. at. Um, so you yeah. need to have uh, that support from other people who are doing it already around you. Yep. I'm seeing some more of that as well, support from family and friends. Um, mm -hmm. Folks are saying it's hard to ask for help because you might yeah. be seen as weak, but that's an important part of the process. Yeah, and that, that weak part goes right back to fixed mindset, that it's not about like, I am weak or I don't know about this is on the process and, and an example of how insidious that, that can be in undermining what you want to do. Any ideas about how, how you'd apply this to young people? Me mentor. one seems like a harder one. I think folks are taking some yeah. time to think about it. Yeah. Just wanted to take a minute and thank everyone for participating so much because that's what makes these webinars, I think, so effective. Um, but some ideas already coming in. Um, we're wanting to, but, uh, folks are saying that this is something that they would need to model in the young people that they yeah. are working with, so it's important to model this. Kids need to see that most of us are not born with all the skills that we have. So. Again, just that concept of being a role model and um, applying this to yourself if you're going to apply it to young people you work with. Yeah. Great. So thank you, thanks for taking a few minutes with us to self-reflect as we um, start looking at some of the information that will support you. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, so my, all, already some other ideas coming in as well. So we, we appreciate you guys taking that time to reflect, as Janet said. I think what we'll, we'll do is move on in, into um, a little bit of just kind of a basic uh, framework for what growth mindset is as we, um, as we discuss this for the rest of our time together. And we'd like to start with the basics. Um, so to define growth mindset, growth mindset is the belief that intelligence and talent is changeable instead of fixed and can be enhanced over time through hard work effective strategies and input from others. So this really gets to what you all were just sharing and what, what Janet was sharing to frame our discussion. Um, so when people possess a growth mindset, they um, tend to be more persistent with their effort and are better equipped to respond positively to adversity and to challenge in the, in the learning process. Um, so many of you may be familiar with the research of uh, Stanford University psychologist Carol Dweck and she is the pioneering, pioneering researcher behind growth mindset, but there's years of research now that's been done that shows that a young person's mindset really influences a host of other behaviors and attitudes, um, that having a growth mindset helps them retain confidence, perseverance, resilience, and to cultivate positive decisions in addition to performing better in school. Um, so here on this slide, you can see a graphic that shows the pathway to higher achievement that's shaped by this idea that kids 
and young people can build intelligence as a result of their efforts. So when students believe they can get smarter, they understand that effort makes them stronger, and therefore they put in extra time and effort, and that leads to higher achievement. So how can mentors specifically use these concepts of growth mindset and these tools to help youth overcome academic challenges and learn and grow effectively? As we know, mentors occupy a really unique position in young people's lives, both inside and outside of school settings. Mentors are advocates, coaches, supportive adult champions, and supportive friends who inspire and support youth to achieve their goals. So we'd like to talk a little bit about the Growth Mindset for Mentors Toolkit and even draw, try a lesson from it to show you how it's specifically tailored to the power that mentors have to help youth succeed. So I'd like to turn it over to Carolyn for a little bit of background. Thank you, Delia. So to provide a bit of context, recognizing the importance of Growth Mindset in supporting student success. Stanford University's Project for Education Research That Scales, or PERTS, City Year, and Mentor, with support from the Rakes Foundation, came together to develop and pilot the online growth mindset for mentors toolkit. The toolkit is designed to teach mentors about the importance of growth mindset and to provide them with concrete strategies for supporting student acquisition of a growth mindset. The toolkit includes a series of the interactive lessons and activities that are not only engaging, but also easy to understand. As Delia mentioned, we'll time to actually engage in one of those activities in just a moment. The development and piloting of the toolkit was undertaken as part of the U.S. Department of Education's Mentoring Mindsets Initiative. In early 2016, City Year piloted the toolkit in two cities and participated in an evaluation led by PARTS to determine the effectiveness of the toolkit. City Year AmeriCorps members also provided feedback on the toolkit, which informed updates that were made to the toolkit by PARTS and Mentor over the summer. Next slide, please. City Year was excited to pilot the Growth Mindset for Mental Toolkit because we recognize that the development of a growth mindset, among other skills and abilities, is crucial to student success. As Tasha mentioned earlier, City Year deploys diverse teams of AmeriCorps members to serve full-time in high-need schools to partner with teachers and school leaders to deliver the evidence-based social, emotional, and academic supports proven to keep struggling students in school and on track to high school graduation and to improve school-wide conditions for learning. As near peer mentors and tutors, City Year AmeriCorps members form developmental relationships with students, which are foundational to the individual student, classroom, and whole school supports our core members provide. City Year takes an asset-based youth development approach to support students in schools. This approach leverages students' strengths and recognizes that these strengths change over time to more deeply engage students in their own learning, build their confidence in the agency, and help students succeed. We see the work with the Growth Mindset for Mentors Toolkit as an important part of the research-based trainings we provide to our AmeriCorps members to, prepare, to effectively prepare them to support student growth. That's why City Year is excited that this school year, we are able to bring the toolkit to 10 cities across the country and to continue our work with PERTS to evaluate the effectiveness of the toolkit. This year, two other organizations are also leveraging the toolkit. These are Take Stock in Children and Citizen Schools, which will also work with PERTS to conduct an evaluation. The evaluation will inform a universal implementation guide that is in the works to help mentoring programs across the country implement growth mindset programming and is slated for release by mentor in June of 2017. If you have any questions about the toolkit or the work that's been done with it thus far, please type them into the questions box.
So now we'd like to turn it over to Tasha to actually try one of these activities now. Uh oh, Tasha, did we lose you? Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Perfect. I apologize for that. I'm not sure what quite happened. Uh, so we're going to try one of these activities now. This was a favorite lesson of City Year Core members, and it comes from Lesson 3 of the Growth Mindset for Mentors Toolkit. We're going to ask you to participate by answering a poll question that we'll launch in just a moment. You're going to look at the following phrases and see if you can guess which of them promotes a growth mindset. So, option A, it looks like that was too easy. Let's give you something a bit more challenging. B, you are so smart. C, I know it was hard, but look how your effort paid off. Or D, you're really talented in math. You should definitely focus on it next year. Delia, will you Great. launch the poll? Yes. All right, so the poll has been launched, and you have about 30 seconds to choose your answer. OK, we'll give you about Five more seconds, and then we'll go ahead and close the poll and show you what everyone has said. All right. There we go. Now you should be able to view everyone's answers. All right, awesome. So it looks like the majority of you chose option C at 85% and then a at 12%, uh, and then B and D uh, were our lowest um, phrases that uh, promote a growth mindset. And so we can talk a little bit about why A and C promote a growth mindset as opposed to why B, while B and D do not. Um, so when thinking about working with our children, um, it looks like that was too easy is actually a way that you can compliment um, a student on, hey, you finished that very quickly. Let's try something a little bit more, more challenging. That actually encourages them um, to try something harder and get out of their comfort zone, um, particularly in, in um, lessons or in subject matter in which they may have struggled um, is a great way to encourage them to kind of stretch their thinking um, and to um, think with a more more of a growth mindset. And then C, I know it was hard, but look how your effort paid off, really encourages students to work harder um, and continue to, um, you know, strengthen their learning muscle and their brain muscles as opposed to saying someone um, is so smart that, me, that can connotate that um, effort doesn't matter and that as long as they're smart, they'll be able to do anything that they put their minds to. So we certainly want to encourage students to, to work harder and to know that subject matter as they matriculate will um, become increasingly more challenging, but that they continue to work hard, they'll be able to master the material. And then uh, D, you're really talented in math, is also a way that we don't want to promote um, um, the growth mindset. We want students to always focus on effort and hard work. Uh, and then it also helps students um, who may have relied on their talents um, up into that point. And again, as we know student, as we know subject matter gets harder in the higher grades, we don't want people to feel as if students to feel as if they're not talented if they do struggle in the area. We, we want them to continue to, to develop and grow. And focusing on talent doesn't allow a student to grow. Great. Thank you so much, Tasha. You guys really nailed that activity. You hit it out of the park. So it sounds like you're all doing pretty well in this area so far. <laughs> nice job. And so for just for everyone to be able to kind of get a sense of these types of activities that are in the toolkit, this is a very, very brief example of the types of kind of interactive lessons that are in the toolkit, um, which we'll direct you to later in the webinar. But we just wanted to give you a chance to kind of try out 
um, one of these activities and get a sense for what mentors can find when they look in the toolkit. Um, and before we move on, I, I wanted to note that there are a couple of questions for our city year team about the pilot um, of the toolkit. So I'd like to pose those to Tasha and Carolyn now. Someone is asking, how long does the curriculum last? Um, so I don't know if, Carolyn, you wanted to speak to the length of time that the, um, that the Growth Mindset for Mentors Toolkit was piloted with City Year. Sure, happy to. So we, there are a series of very short lessons. It's about 15 minutes each lesson. And how we did it is we actually did uh, one lesson each day over the course of a week so that there was time to engage with the lesson independently because it's all online. And then after engaging with the lesson, our AmeriCorps members had a chance to talk with one another and reflect on what they had learned. All together, the whole effort took a little over four hours. So it's a very, very light lift, but again, each individual lesson is only about 15 minutes, and our AmeriCorps members found that in that short amount of time, they were able to learn a tremendous amount that really helped them to think about their own growth mindset and also helped to improve their work with students as well. Great. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And I guess the, the other question, just to clarify as well, um, someone's posing, is the toolkit like a curriculum, or is it not? How is it different from a curriculum that you would use um, in a school setting? Okay. Carolyn or Tasha, did you want? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Tasha, would you like to take that, or would you like me to provide an answer? Yeah, sure. And if you want to pick up where I leave off. Uh, it, so it is not a curriculum. It really is designed um, to be a tool, right, on how you talk to your students or, you know, your mentee um, for mentors. Um, it's really to help you kind of evolve your thinking around how students learn, how you may even learn. Um, later I'll share a little bit about how our core members um, share that they learn from the toolkit as well. So it's not necessarily a curriculum that you would teach to students, um, and it's more about getting um, your mindset, changing the way that we think about our own learning and how students learn. And Carolyn, if you want to add more to that. No, I think that's perfect. I mean, the only thing that I would potentially add is Perts and Mentor did a superb job in developing the toolkit, in making it really engaging and fun. So the activities are not only teaching you a lot, but as you're going through them, the time flies by because they're, they're quite fun and uh, applicable to real-world learning and the work that's done with students as well. Great. Thank you both so much for answering um, those questions. And for folks who have others, um, feel free to continue to type them in as we move into our next section of our webinar, which is really um, where you'll hear a little bit more in-depth information from um, our presenters about their use of the toolkit in the field. And I also just wanted to mention briefly that we did ask you to do a little homework for this webinar, which was to take the mindset, um, the growth mindset quiz to find out about your mindset. So I hope as you are listening and hearing from our panelists that you know, feel free to type in your observations um, or things that you'd want to share. Since this is a smaller group, we can certainly share a little bit of the insights or ideas that you all have about how to best use this in your work, and um, certainly we want to answer your questions. Um, so, as I said, we want to shift a bit now to hear um, a little bit more from Janet, Carolyn, and Tasha um, about how they've used growth mindset in their work with students in different settings. So they're going to discuss the different but very impactful ways that growth mindset can be implied, uh, applied in these different environments. And then we're going to, again, open it up for your questions about the use of these tools in your work, whether you're a mentor, a mentoring practitioner, um, or somewhere in between. Cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the work of change and um, how that plays out from both um, train, doing a number of trainings for mentoring partnerships across the state and being involved in a, um, a pilot 
of training mentors to work with middle school kids in one-on-one -on -one matches, usually in either community-based settings, site-based, or out of school. So one of the things that we really get is work can be work. Change takes practice, and work can be hard. It's beyond getting a set of uh, an awareness. And the proof really is in the brain. One of the things that's so cool about um, growth mindset is the basis in neurology. So you can pull up all sorts of sites on the internet of the proof is in the brain. So you can watch neurons when you practice or think a new way. Each time the, the, the neuron ends are wiggling along and they finally start connecting and then they connect more fully and they make a bridge for a new way of thinking and a new habit. It's not just understanding will not change a mindset as reflected in everyday living. And it takes effort. Sometimes I think effort is a whole topic within understanding growth mindset of what does effort mean to a student or a youth who said, well, I, I did try hard to understand what do they think that try hard is in a concrete basis. For example, if I want to play tennis better, watching the best play, and I do, and having it explained is helpful, I can recognize a beautiful serve. But unless I play three times a week, my body will just not perform as I want it to. A second thing about growth mindset is many of us have negative thoughts that are powerful and persistent. Whether that I can't do math, my family doesn't do math, I can't sing, any of those other kinds of things, I'm not a good cook and I want to be. We know that our neural connections can be softened. This is the brain science again underneath it. And broken. Those pathways and um, automatic connections can be broken by choosing different behavior and practicing different thoughts. Some of us acquire these negative thoughts in childhood. We take that history through us throughout our lives, whether it's I'm not enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm even I'm bad at small talk. A third sort of just principle underlying that or idea surrounding growth mindset is that when we're stressed, we are less creative. We're less resourceful when we're stressed. And so there are two, all sorts of tools supporting in the toolkit, supporting um, approaches and techniques. One of them is just managing stress and being mindful helps. So uh, a whole number of sets, whether that's just deep breathing, square breathing, or reminding to just breathe can take the edge off it and allow those new behaviors and new thoughts to rise. Next slide. So in uh, Pacific Northwest, um, growth mindset and non, in, in quotes non-cognitive performance factors have been very popular and discussed a lot. So we entered into a small pilot study and we wanted to know how feasible it is for mentors to be a vehicle for building growth mindset. In, in our world, that was in community-based mentoring, just out and about, whether that was in a boys and girls club site where the um, adults were matched with a specific youth or in an after-school program. And to what fidelity the mentors and programs implemented, this says curriculum, but it also was a set of 20, 20 minute, say, activities. And not going into a lot of the detail that I think the great result of that, within only three months, there was a shift toward growth mindset for these middle school kids through their mentors. There were no classes that were offered to them. And that the, um, the kids thought that the um, mentors were modeling growth mindset. So and even in a really simple um, way, we can you know, see substantiation for that piece that um, the research shows that mindset is a malleable, a very malleable variable. So I'd like to go on and talk, talk about the next slide, which is some of the things that we discovered in this short pilot. So the, at first, the mentors were really excited about using these modules. They had, they, had the, um, they had all sorts of resources. They really wanted to do it. We trained them. And then they became uncomfortable with what they later, later told us in focus groups were somehow having the role of a teacher. And they, they were not so comfortable with that. They thought, you know, when they were oriented to their program, that they were just there to have relationship, to hang out, to help and support, that they really weren't there to try to change something in a, in a, in a um, concrete way. 
they also wanted a bunch of resources, different kinds of scripts that were provided, um, how to talk about some things, and they had a blog. And it was interesting to note that when they had all of those resources, then, even though we told them they're simply resources for you to look at, they started on their own thinking that they needed to do everything and follow all of those, and then felt stressed about it. So that was an interesting implementation uh -huh, for us. There were some desire and action about practicing the, um, techniques that would support growth mindset outside of the one-to-one -one match, and pretty much that didn't happen. They saw it as homework, even though um, they were framed as being really fun activities. And a few of the mentors, in the, fast, in the last um, bullet here you can see is that, um, in particular, one of the instances is so um, poignant for me is that a, one of the mentors said, well, I, I stopped doing that, that because the, my mentee was having a really hard time. And, and within the research that we team, we're saying, no, that's exactly the time to support using growth mindset when challenges are coming up. So finally, here's some lessons learned and some ideas that um, may help in, in inserting growth mindset in programs where you don't have a group setting where you're training or meeting together, when mentors are way more independent off on their own. First of all, is really orienting mentors in, in their early stages that um, teaching kids, modeling kids, an instrumental role, having an instrumental role in, in change is, is important and, and can affect how they see themselves in their role. We think having cheat sheets, like a card, that, a, a little card that you can put in your wallet of growth mindset language or a de-stressing tool, like something called square breathing, or this amazingly powerful word called yet. I don't know how to do it yet. I'm not a gourmet cook yet. I'm not a singer yet. Um, can be helpful when, when you're stuck or just want to remind yourself of something. I think it's really, really important that the shift that the mentors, the program staff, and the leadership shift growth, set, growth mindset as well and really take that on as a campaign so that the effort to change is really well understood and that's a key um, factor in youth adopting a growth mindset. So that's pretty much that second piece too. A campaign means like within there's so many things that can be done to advance and increase the quality of these mentoring programs. So pick a theme, let's say it's growth mindset in a year and really look at change at all levels. Um, not just training set, but that every time there's a match support meeting, that some tidbit of that um, approach is being um, implemented. And then more recently, it's really come to my knowledge and seeing what kids and young adults are doing in gaming and getting points and being motivated to try new things. So how can we gamify really growth mindset? Can you get points? not real money, but points on something of, of the times you did that or the times you said to yourself a different thing or that you said something else to someone to support growth mindset. And finally, again, work toward behavior change, knowing that awareness and knowledge are the first steps. They're really, really important, but they're the first steps. So that's a, a summary, brief things of what did we think were principles, what did we learn, and how might it be um, how might growth mindset be implemented in a program where you're not meeting and have a, have a captured audience? And so now, I would love to turn it over. Um, City Year did a much larger project than ours, um, and um, they're going to talk about this now, which will be really great. Thank you, Janet. Um, so as she shared, um, City Year, um, along with PERTS and Mentor, um, conducted a um, pilot or participated, excuse me, in the pilot earlier this year in February uh, where we had core members in a control group and in an active treatment group. So Columbus was a treatment group 
at Columbus and Miami was a treatment group, and then we had two other sites that were um, a control group. And here's a little bit of the data um, and highlights from um, the study. So. What we know is that AmeriCorps members in Columbus and Miami actually showed an increase in their endorsement of the belief that their lowest performing students can perform at a high level. And I think Janet um, really did a good job of underscoring about uh, removing the stress, um, at least attempting to remove the stress so that you can create an environment conducive to the growth mindset. Um, particularly for uh, city year um, student, students that we are working with, they are dealing with an enormous amount of in-school and out-of-school um, stress. So it is critically important for us to have um, really try to create an environment that would allow them to think about um, their own learning and how they learn. Uh, and so when we were working with some of the students, we would either isolate some of the students out of the typical classroom, what we call pullouts, or we would work in small groups, uh, small group settings um, of like students so that we could have a common language with those students who needed the support the most. Um, secondly, we knew that the treatment has statistically significant effect on beliefs that students can be helped with mentoring. Um, so there's, you know, all type of studies that are showing that mentoring actually does help students, particularly those students living and going to school in high poverty, high trauma um, conditions. Um, they look at their mistakes um, as an opportunity. Mentors can help students look at their mistakes as an opportunity to learn um, and that, you know, in some of our environments, we know students look at mistakes as failure, and so we want to help to reverse some of that long-held um, belief that when you make a mistake, it is um, an indication that you are failing. And that uh, after the study, we had a 96% approval rate, so mentors overwhelmingly rated it as helpful uh, and um, practically actionable, and anecdotally, here in Columbus, we had core members share with us um, that it really helped them rethink how they learn and how their ability to learn new skills even you know at their age we our mentors are eight between the ages of 18 and 25 and we also know that um, learn behaviors are really difficult to break so for example you may have um, struggled in your own um, you know K through 12 education um, history with math. And so you may be apprehensive with helping someone else learn math because you struggled. And so they were able to really rethink uh, how they thought about you know, their inability to learn math or to really master math to help other students um, be successful. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So just some of the comments we've had, um, kind of the feedback um, to um, the toolkit. Uh, we were visited by um, Assistant Secretary um, of Education, um, Nadia Chinoy Dobby. Um, she visited Livingston Elementary School in Columbus in February. And it's important to note that we have 54 core members serving in six schools in Columbus, but we the growth mindset is intended to uh, create a common language uh, amongst schools, amongst the teachers and administrators, and even in students. And so we believe that our work was able to impact for the 4,000 whole school students that we serve. So not just the students that we work with day uh, every day, one on one. We are impacting how we think about learning uh, throughout the entire school environment. And so she visited Livingston Elementary School um, and, you know, just shared that she knows that great inventors and educators know that struggling is an essential part of learning, growing, and ultimately um, succeeding. And she went on to say that, um, again, underscoring what, you know, Janet and I have both shared, that it's especially exciting to watch mentors work through the toolkit and understand how they and their students can learn and grow. And, you know, that brings me to something that we knew was going to be critically important for this pilot to be successful in the schools that we were serving was to really have the buy-in from all levels of the district, from the school environment, um, 
and really thinking about developing that common language, kind of what is the, the way that we are going to talk about students as a community and creating a growth mindset community and not just you know, the city year program speaks this way to, uh, the city year mentor speaks this way to their mentees, and then maybe another program may use a different language uh, when they're mentoring their, stu their students. We know we all want one common theme um, from our students, and that is for them to grow and for them to learn. Uh, and so if we can center on what type of language we need to um, use with our students to create an environment that supports a growth mindset. And so we knew early on um, that we were going to need the district's approval and support as well with the, uh, the individual schools that we operate in um, to really adopt this. And I'm happy to say that City Year um, Columbus is working with our school district now um, to train some of the mentors working in this school. So it's now turned into kind of a train the trainer opportunity for us to really uh, think about how we as a community are going to mentor our students. And then lastly, Carolyn shared um, that we will be scaling this um, to an additional 10 city year sites. We're still working on the list, but we will go from um, two um, you know, active um, sites to 12. And I'll turn it over um, to Delia for Q&A. Great. Thank you so much, Tasha. That was, that was awesome. And thank you so much, Janet, for these two really different kind of looks at this in different settings. I think it's so interesting to kind of compare them. And we're already getting some questions about um, the work that you both did. So I think I'll just kind of, without further ado, launch into those questions. And then please continue to put the questions that you do have into the questions tab, as well as just ideas you have if you want to talk about the quiz that you took and your uh, reactions to it or anything that's been discussed today and, and ideas you have for how this applies to your mentoring work. We, we definitely want to raise those ideas. Um, so to start out with some of the questions that we've gotten, um, Tasha and Janet, I, I wanted to hear from you about, I think both of you spoke to some extent about the impacts of this work on mentors, um, but we wanted to find out, I know there's, you know, there's the evaluation that's going to be done, um, but what are the preliminary findings or what are you at least observing in terms of mentee outcomes? So what are the outcomes you're seeing in your work um, on the young people themselves? Well, let me, I'll, um, this is Janet, I'll take a really quick piece of that because you had a much larger study, um, Tasha, and then you can talk about it. Um, ours was very short again, um, a shift toward growth mindset, adopting growth mindset within, within um, three months, and then um, the, the shift in the mentor's growth mindset as well. Because it was such a short um, uh, pilot, we really didn't look at other related outcomes for, for grades or the, um, the gap and the achievement gap, but even though the other research um, exists. So, Tasha? The same here. We are um, still participating in the, in the study or in the pilot now, and it's one of the reasons why we're scaling to more sites so that we can collect on that data. We are still participating um, this year, so this year will be um, an opportunity for us to really review at the start of the year, uh, at the start of the academic year versus um, at the end of the academic year, kind of the growth of our students and how growth mindset um, had an impact on, on their learning for the year. And let me gotcha. add one more thing to that. Our, um, we also were asking our mentors and providing them some language about talking about youth interests. And it was very interesting that, I mean, that's a common understanding of what would happen, let's say, in a community-based program, that they would talk about their interests. But they said they went way more deeply, even though we really didn't ask them to do that, and, and that their relationships were stronger because they had those conversations with were the conversations about what was hard. And I think that's very interesting. Thanks so much. Janet, here's another question for you, um, and certainly Tasha and Carolyn, if you want to speak to this as well. But Janet, I think this gets to what you were discussing earlier um, about some of the, the, the difficulties that folks have with change. What would you do um, if you were trying to use growth mindset with a young person and they just kind of kept trying the same thing and, and it just wasn't working? They just felt like they just weren't able to do it. What would you recommend um, mentors to do in that situation? Um. 
Well, I would want, as a mentor, I would want some resources. And there's some, like I was saying about a cheat sheet, sort of having in my back pocket things to say when I'm sort of stumped with, um, what am I going to say when you said, I have tried this over and over again. I cannot do it. I'm not good at it. And beyond a word yet. So there's great resources, I think, in, in the toolkit and other places about, for example, what do you say if a student is struggling in spite of their strong effort? I think you like you really look at communication skills, acknowledging that, first centering yourself and calming yourself so that stress is going away, addressing the feelings and the thoughts that the student is having and not just jumping to, okay, growth mindset would say we could do this. Let's let's see what's happening and struggling and and I go back with my mentee to um, the neurology of it sometimes. She she doesn't roll her eyes at me even anymore, and, which is great. Um, and say, you know, if you if it were easy, you wouldn't be learning anything. And and then finally start trying to compare it to other things that are maybe easier to grasp about what does it take to to get strong? What does it take to be able to run faster? Um, to say, okay, and the other thing is, okay, we're here today. What might what might be good for tomorrow? And not and chunk it out as opposed to it's this huge thing that I can't change. What can you change today and what do you want to do tomorrow? Those are my off the cuff things, but there are great resources about what to say. What is language, growth mindset language that supports even let's say when a child is succeeding with strong effort, what are the kinds of things that are appropriate to say? Thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, and we have a question that seems a little bit more relevant to Tasha. Um, so Tasha, from your core members' perspective, how do you think the toolkit helped them, um, specifically the mentors? Um, so I shared a little bit about it helped them think about their own or rethink their own challenges. Um, to learning. So again, I gave the example of, you know, we've had core members who, because we tutor in math and English, they may have struggled throughout their, you know, their academic career in math. Um, and so tutoring a student in, in even in third grade, fourth grade math um, may seem like a challenge to them. And so for some of them, they shared that it made them want to go uh, and practice a little bit more and maybe try new, new um, tricks and tips to being able to effectively um, tutor. And then, you know, keep in mind our our core members um, are only a few years out of college, and so many of them are thinking about what's next after their city year, service year, and so what was it that they want to do? We've had we had core members who decided to um, go to grad school who shared that the growth mindset had them, you know, help them think through um, going to grad school immediately after this experience versus going to get a job and just making money. It was thinking about, I could go ahead and do it now um, and do something now, learn a new skill now versus putting it off uh, when they were, you know, what they felt like better prepared, um, so to speak. And so just with, again, in, in earlier slides, we talked about kind of changing the mindset of the mentor um, to help the, the mentee, and that was kind of the, the greatest effect of this toolkit was, you know, you had core members who were apprehensive about being a mentor anyhow, um, to now they feel really, uh, uh, em, you know, empowered to be a mentor with the, with the toolkit. And, you know, Janet discussed with using the, the right language, I think having the tools to work with students um, who identify just like the, the um, uh, participant said, a student who um, just continues to do things in the way they've learned, because it's very difficult um, to, to change, you know, old habits and even how you've learned something, um, it, it's very difficult to undo. And so to have tools and resources that help them work with some of the students who are challenged the most uh, by change, I think was the, the greatest impact of this toolkit. Yeah. I'd like to add just one short thing to that, Delia, and that is the importance of having it be a we approach to shifting growth mindset and enhancing growth mindset, that when the mentor, when any program staff, when you all, when I work on growth mindset, and it's an overt 
effort, let's say within the four staff here, that we really take this on. If we want, if we believe in it enough that think it's good for kids and good enough to invest in a toolkit and research, it's really good enough to shift the organizational culture and my behavior. And that provides invaluable insight into how to answer a youth and or that a mentor takes on, just like you guys did at the very beginning, identify something during that year of, let's say, concentrated growth mindset that they really think they can't do, that's a challenge, and to work at that and share it back and forth. So it's not a, you change because you need it, but it's, it's a, this is important for everybody, and I'm going to take on that magnitude of change as well. And similarly, so I'll much. share. I'll, I'll, I'll say one last thing too when it related to the core members working with the students. Um, Janet, you brought up a, a really good point because it allowed our core members to feel comfortable sharing their own challenges with their students who, you know, yeah. look to these, you know, near peer, but they're adults um, to them and saying, well, you've got it all together, you know, I'm still struggling, so you can't relate. So it really was an opportunity for our core members to relate, you know, to some of the challenges um, that our students have and to feel comfortable enough to share that so that students saw them as humans uh, that they could actually um, identify with and be more willing to kind of share um, the challenges and work to come to work together to overcome some of those. Thank you both so much. Um, we've, we're getting such good questions. I wish we had more time. I just wanted to make a quick announcement and then ask one last question to both Tasha and Janet. Um, just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that the um, the Growth Mindset for Mentors Toolkit is free, and we're going to provide the tool the link to it in just a moment. Um, so you'll be able to access it for both you and for mentors. Um, can just go on that that website and take a look at those tools and start using them right away. And there will also be an implementation guide that is being worked on as we speak. Um, as Carolyn kind of alluded, there's a lot of work being put into it based on the pilot results and wanting to make sure that it aligns. But that will be more geared toward programs and is coming um, likely in the summer of 2017. So just an announcement that both of those resources are free um, for the mentoring field. Um, and sort of on a related note, just about the toolkit and growth mindset in general, there have been a, a couple of questions about the age range for this toolkit and the, the developmental um, approach to it. So I guess the, the best way to ans ask this question is, um, for the toolkit specifically, um, how, uh, what age range would you all recommend using that toolkit and the exercises in the toolkit with? And are there specific considerations for growth mindset for working with different age groups of youth? And Tasha, maybe we could start with you if you have anything to share about that, that question. So, you know, City Year serves third through 10th grade students. Um, this really is a tool that can be used across all of the age demographics. Again, you know, our core members are 18 to 25, and they felt that the toolkit was even useful to their own learning. And so you may adapt the conversation, uh, you, know, you know, to a younger student um, versus an older student and what you're talking about, but the language remains the same, the common language, the using the yet, the challenging of the mind, um, you know, I, that can be used, you know, for all grades, for all ages. Um, um, yeah, Janet, if you have something else to add. Um, no, I think that's great. I totally agree. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. We have a bunch of other questions, some really, really good specific questions as well. So I will um, share contact information at the end of this webinar so that folks can feel free to reach out to us and ask those questions after we conclude. Um, but before we do that, we just wanted to share these resources with you finally. We've been talking about the toolkit for an hour now, so we're finally giving you uh, the link to it. So it's right here in the um, slide deck, and we will certainly forward that over to you um, as a follow-up to the webinar. We'll share the recording for this webinar, the link to the toolkit, and you'll be able to access all of these hyperlinks here as well. Um, and we also put together some additional resources that you might be interested in. The PERS website, um, which we spoke about earlier, we wanted to encourage mentoring programs or schools that are interested in um, incorporating mentoring um, with a growth mindset lens 
to, to apply for technical assistance and training through the National Mentoring Resource Center, which is free as well. So um, that's, that's no cost to mentoring programs. And then there's the Mindset Works website as well, which might be a helpful resource. City Years website, and um, finally, a place to find your local mentoring partnership that does the type of work that, um, that Janet spoke about earlier at Mentoring Works Washington. Here are some of our references, and finally, our contact information. Um, so we wanted to just take a moment to thank you all for joining us. Um, we really appreciate the time you've taken and your participation today, uh, which made this webinar a lot more interactive and fun, and um, your time reflecting on your own growth mindset. And we hope that it was helpful in just kind of getting you thinking about the ways this work can apply to your youth mentoring work. Um, so thanks so much, and look out for those resources that we'll send um, as a follow-up to this webinar. Take care, everyone.